Hi, Alexi. Welcome to Alex Cala. Thank uh, you. Nice, nice to have you here. It's great to be here. <laughs> so, um, uh, you were talking at the beginning of your talk about some kind of a barrier mm -hmm. between how data science job work is done mainly in Python mm -hmm. and how then is consumed by Spark, uh, Spark apps, mm -hmm. mainly done in Scala. Mm -hmm. So how do you propose that uh, both worlds can be like the bridge mm -hmm. together? So uh, what, uh, what, can, what can we do as a community to bring more people from the Python world to our world to bring more data science to the Scala community. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, you know, I have to say it's it's you know it's great that people do data science in general, and so Python is a great language. It's kind of it's a way for many people to learn, right? So it's a it's an easy first language, and so I would say majority of data scientists are using uh, Python, and a lot of Spark users uh, use Python. So it's a great entry way for them, right? So. What happens, uh, we have in Spark, we have data frames, which is basically uh, a very efficient data structure which lets you examine data sets. So uh, you can start in Python, uh, but sometimes you need more efficiency. For instance, you want to add Spark streaming, and you start. You want to kind of merge your historical data with some real-time data. And in that case, uh, 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 Spark streaming, it's easier done in, in Scala. That becomes, I think, more natural to do uh, uh, those things in Scala. Also, if you're consuming your data, data from Kafka, which is a very yeah. typical way to feed Spark, right? Uh, uh, Kafka is also written in Scala, and it's also kind of very easily accessed, you know, from Scala. So I think there are drivers for uh, full-stack data scientists, mm -hmm. right? Basically, data scientists who don't just want to ask for data, right? If you, if you want to really uh, make your own data, right? If yeah. you uh, don't want to wait, uh, this kind of data scientists uh, usually become data engineers as well. So we have kind of a blurred boundary between data science and data engineering, mm -hmm. and we see kind of the emergence of full-stack data scientists. So I think if you are kind of a full-stack data scientist, if you really like to understand how things work, generate your own data and gain efficiency, you will be interested in Scala, right? And so we see a lot of these guys kind of being curious. So they come to Spark uh, uh, for data, for big data, and then they realize it's actual Scala insights. And so yeah. we see, you know, Spark being is a big driver for Scala. So uh, I would say it's, it's really good to have uh, multiple APIs uh, for Spark uh, and then kind of uh, allow folks who want to be full stack data scientists to learn Scala as well. Yeah, um, yeah because there, there was historically in Spark is two, three years, some limitations in the Python world, maybe a Spark streaming at the beginning wasn't available for Python. Mm -hmm. But do you think uh, that conversely, there are things that s the Scala language um, we can learn from Python, that things that we could bring from the Python language and the Python world to the Scala community and the Scala language? Absolutely. I think, and, and uh, actually we can learn from any many other technologies. For instance, you know, Martin, his talk, you know, about Scala and Spark said, like, we can learn a lot of things from Spark, uh, right? And so I think what we should learn from Python is, you know, it's a very friendly community. Mm -hmm. Uh, which makes uh, its documentation and code very approachable. Uh, they standardized on a lot of things, so it's, yeah. there is a lot of references, uh, and and uh, there is a lot of beginner-friendly tutorials. So, I think for seasoned Scala developers, we kind of it's easy to forget that for newbies it's very hard. And so, newbies for instance, Scala doc is hard, right? Like like what are all these characters? I don't know them, <laughs> right? So Py Python documentation is much easier. So I think we really need to uh, work with uh, uh, other communities to kind of understand what are the pain points. And right, and we need to make friendlier documentation. So, for instance, Cat's project, which is a type level project, is focused from the very beginning to make documentation very accessible uh, and very correct. It's kind of the produced documentation which is compiled mm -hmm. using TAT, uh, which is a project basically kind of write markdown with Scala code in it. Uh, so, I think we can use our strengths and we can kind of expand uh, kind of on documentation uh, and being more uh, user friendly, more newbie friendly, and I think it will win a lot of users. Yeah. And one of the themes of your talk was revolution and how we're kind of living one revolution yep. in the Scala world and the big data world. And what do you think that in the what this revolution is going to change? How the Scala community and the Scala language is going to change with this revolution that we su suffering or happening right now uh, in the next five ten years? 
So uh, I, yeah, I think that's kind of it's a good metaphor, right? Because uh, uh, you know, there is often you can hear like data is revolutionizing the way we do business, we live, right? So data is everywhere, right? And kind of it's already you know our geolocation is already very well known. Our genomes have been sequenced, right? Kind of communications, kind of uh, helped by personal assistance, right? So basically, the revolution is that data is going to be everywhere most human activity is going to be digitized. And uh, personal assistants and basically intelligent systems, uh, like self-driving cars, things like that, they're going to, like smart houses, they're going to basically learn our patterns of behavior and they're going to help us, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so Carlos Gestren, who is the CEO of Dato, uh, a big data company out of Seattle, uh, and professor of University of Washington, he had the keynote last year a data summit, and basically he said that every application will have to have machine learning, right? Every user-facing application will have to be machine learning enabled. And so ML will be a key differentiator in every consumer technology, right? Basically because everything uh, humans touch can be analyzed through machine learning made better through interactive feedback loop. Yeah. So uh, we need to create all the services. Basically the way forward for this uh, uh, architecture basically have machine learning as a service available, right? Like you cannot really build all of this yourself. So probably companies like Google, Facebook, and others, maybe multiple third parties, will provide these machine learning services. And so I I think that Skull is actually well positioned to be a language, you know, in which these services will be implemented because it it will be APIs, you know, they should be high performance and they should be correct, and we have all these tools. So when this machine enabled uh, machine learning enabled services will be built, I think we are in a good position to advocate that you know, Skull is a great language to build this infrastructure and get machine learning into consumer applications across the board. So you know, if a Skull developer should join the revolution. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alexi. Thank you. It's a great to be here. Yeah. Thanks.